All right, welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. I am so excited. We are almost there. It's like a month and a bit until we've got season two, and I cannot wait. I have watched the trailer. I, I don't even know how many times I've watched the trailer, but uh, one of the times I watched it was this morning before I went to work, and I was taking notes, and I took eight pages of notes with 70 different points of things that I, I had missed in my previous viewings, things that were jumping out at me. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Stuff that I missed. And uh, just a heads up, spoiler warning. Obviously, I'm talking about the trailer and the television show, but I am a book reader. I have read the books. So I am going to be talking about stuff that happens in the books. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I, I don't think my spoilers in this video are going to go past uh, book three, which is The Dragon Reborn. So if you've read that far, you're good to go. But if you haven't read that far and you don't want to be spoiled, I, uh, go watch another video. Like this video first and then go watch another video. Or go read the books and then come back and like it. I don't know. I, I just, I, I, fair warning. Uh, but also, before we go into it, I do want to again encourage everyone to support uh, the Entertainment Community Fund. You can donate. Uh, find other ways to support, you know, post on social media. Basically, just let these studio heads and whatever, these billionaires, whatever, know that we are behind the people, uh, the WGA and the SAG. Is it AFSTRA? I don't know, but I fully am fully in support of them. You are watching this video because you love the Wheel of Time TV show, or maybe you hate it. I don't know. Even if you hate it, that generally means that you like some things on TV, like we all watch TV. You know, some people might think that the jobs that these writers and actors do is frivolous. You know, why don't they just get a more secure job? But we all consume the products that they make. They make things that all of us use and that make our lives better, make our lives more interesting, give us things to talk about and nerd out about and apparently make insanely detailed and analytical YouTube videos about. So, yeah, I, I, I just they deserve to be compensated for their work they deserve to be treated with dignity and they deserve to not be told that they can be replaced with chat gpt like that's just nonsense but anyway so all that to say support them again i'm going to link to a place where you can donate in the description below and uh oh i'm going into my body i'm going to be watching out for that but okay without further ado let's just get into it let's be nerdy let's be nerdy let's be nerdy let's be nerdy All right, so here's the first thing I noticed. Look, look at that Kisiera. Is that the same Kisiera she had in season one? Does she have multiple Kisieras? Like, I know she's a noble woman, she could, but like, here's the one she had in season one. That does not look like that. I, does she have multiple? It's totally cool she does. People love clothes, but I just, that was the first thing I, I noted. New Kisiera. The other thing I just loved in this was just the way her clothes are so bright and clean compared to the the very muted colors of everyone behind her like even this lady in blue that you see there her blue does not look as bright as moraine's blue she just stands out and i just think that's really cool. like everything is so crisp okay then we've got this gorgeous shot of tarvalon i i love the way tarvalon has been realized in the show there's, there's a couple of shots in the trailer i think i'm gonna only highlight this one because this is the one that i had something cool look at this look at all these trees that's an ogier grove that's where loyal is yeah <laughs> and then we've got this like hand motif that sort of runs through the trail we've got that here with with moraine and her hand in the water uh later on there's of course the lady with the like the bloody hand that comes out there's nynaeve with her hands covered in blood there's a couple of like it's a repeating motif in the trailer which is kind of cool uh but i also just i this scene i, I think i said it in my initial reaction but it very much remi reminds me of of episode one when she's in the hot tub and lands like it could be warmer and and here you know she's I, I, in my imagination i don't know but like it's getting cold and she's touching the water and she she can't do anything about it and she's just grieving the loss of of the power and it's oh it's heartbreaking i think this this storyline is going to be is going to be epic all right i gotta thank pez for this because i would never have noticed this look at that sun he's got a sun on the back of his jacket that looks like kyrian I don't know if he's in Kyrian, if like this is, I don't know. Somehow that's a Kyrianan symbol on his jacket that he's got. I don't think Rand would buy a jacket this fancy because his jacket is super, super fancy. But there's also these, like, look on his shoulders. There's this white stuff on his shoulders that looks 
I don't know if it's part of the pattern, but it kind of looks like a stain of some kind to me. And I don't know what it could be. But anyway, let me know your thoughts. What do you think those stains are? This is a very fancy jacket. Do you think Moraine did this? Do you think Moraine is... Well, I know Moraine's in Kyrian because of that thing that, you know, Rosamund Pike did. I think it was New York Comic Con. But uh, we know she's there. So she might have gotten him these fancy jackets. Who knows? What do you think? Oh, the other thing to note about this scene... There's this like haze that goes on on the sides of this scene uh, that was pointed out by Jess Sedai when I was on the Dusty Wheel for like Trailer Guide on. Uh, so that could indicate that this is a dream sequence or it could indicate that this is a mirror world because, you know, the mirror world was kind of distorted like that. The desolation, like the fact that he's all alone here, it, it lends itself to both. So I'm curious, what do you think? Do you think this is dream or do you think this is mirror world and he's like all alone in here? He maybe will run into some mysterious lady. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, so this scene with Moraine and that, that knife, it looks to me like it's right after the end of episode eight. Like her hair is all disheveled. And that knife, like even the location looks like it's the same location. And that knife looks like the one that she held to Rand's neck at the end of the episode. I don't know why that would be like, it could be like, I don't, are they just picking up right after or would it be a flashback? Or it could be something else. I could be completely wrong. What do you think? I th But that knife looks like the same knife to me. This Merdral looks so smooth and, and moist. And it's just... Ugh, like, I don't like it. I mean, I like it. I love it. It's great. It's creepy. It's, I'm trying not to curse. But it's really, really, really creepy. But also... Ugh, moist Merdral. No! No, no, no! Uh, there are some suggestions in the comments that this is Ishii traveling with uh, with the true power. What do you think? I don't know. Do you think? Uh, I don't know. It's cool. Whatever he's doing. It's cool. Also, who do you think he's talking to? We've got a Gwen here in her novice whites and she is channeling like a... Not cursing. She's channeling like a mofo, let me say. It's amazing. I love it. This, uh, this looks to me like it's the basement of the tower. That's my guess as to where she is here. Is she practicing? I don't know, but I want to see it. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. And of course, we've got Leandrin here still wearing her dark friend bustier with the like, what is it? Uh, authoritative queer suspenders. I don't know. She looks fire. I cannot wait for Leandrin's story. I, who would I like if you had told me before the show came out that I would care about Leandrin? I would not have believed you. And yet here I am. I want to know everything about her. I obviously, you know, not rooting for her to succeed, but also I also kind of not rooting for her to fail because I I can't believe What the hell? OK, so we've got this scene. Most people think it's a dark friend social. It could be the Age of Legends. I don't know. I, I kind of go back and forth. I went on a huge debate about this uh, with Brie and Pez ages ago. But the thing to notice, uh, there is a child. Look at that in the corner. Do, you don't see, I'm, I'm actually going to zoom in. Hold on. Look, that's Ishii walking with a child. That's a child. Why is there a child in this many fireplace evil dark friend room? No! Why? Okay, so in my initial reaction, I, I you know, obviously the naive here. Glorious. She's in an apron. She's doing chores. There's what, garlic on the wall behind her. Love it. But I wasn't sure who she was speaking to. I guess Alana... And I'm actually doubling down on it. I'm pretty sure it's Alana because look at those bells. That's Arafelin decoration in her hair there for sure. I'm pretty sure. Like 99.9. .9, this is Alana. Okay. For this shot, I just have to say, I love how precise Ishii's weaves are. Like, you know, they aren't, per but they, oh, they look spherical. They look scientific. Like it's, oh, it's great. How, like he just, he's obviously an expert and everybody, everybody else is, is nowhere near where he is. It's just, mwah. It's amazing. I love that. Okay, I'm with most of the fandom that this woman is probably Lanfear being released by Ishii, like maybe by that precise weaving that he was just doing. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, here's the thing. I, I do think that I that we're all probably right about that, but I'm only at about like 65, 70% on that. I wouldn't be surprised if we were all wrong. But I honestly, I have no other guesses. Like, it's not like I'm thinking, maybe it's not Landfair, maybe it's, I, I literally am like, eh, we could be wrong, but I don't know who else it could be. So Landfair is my best guess. Okay, I think this looks so cool. The way they got the weaving going around their arms like that, that looks pretty cool. And I, I, I love the way they've done the collars. Like it's, 
it looks more animalistic. It's like a yoke or something. I don't know. It's it's more dehumanizing, which is awful, but perfect for what they need to be. They are still they still have the pacifiers. I'm I'm hoping for some sort of explanation about why they don't just, you know, like spit them out. I'm hoping that there's some explanation, like maybe they're they're locked in for the power. Maybe they're like ordered. They have to hold an explanation would go a long way into making them look less like. Evil binkies. All right. And here we've got some Damani blowing away some Shinarans here. We've got Uno and they're in the middle. I'm pretty sure that's like hot Masima. And they're on the, the left here. I kept wanting to say, like, instinctively, I kept saying that's Borman. If you watched Willow, you know, the actor that was supposed to play Ingtar in season one ended up playing Borman on Willow. Uh, but because of that, that makes me wonder if this is Ingtar here on the left. So that would make sense. We've got Uno, Masima, Ingtar. And of course, Perrin, same boat, getting blown away by Damani. What is he holding on to? Is that like he look, I'm just noticing this now because I've slowed this down. Was there something in his hand that he's dropping? I don't know. I'm gonna have to watch that again and take some more notes. Oh my gosh. Eight pages is apparently not enough. All right, and here we have. I'm so excited. Oh, it's gonna be brutal though. We've got Nynaeve's accepted test, right? Like she's here in her, it's not, would it be novice whites? I don't know how they're gonna do that, but she's like still got her two rivers belt on there, it looks like. Uh, and she's going into the arches. I don't know who these women are. I'm guessing one of them is Shiriam. Uh, they're on the left. On the right, that, that's almost certainly Leandrin. Like, I tried zooming in on it, but it, it just got really weird. The woman in the middle behind Nynaeve there, like right behind Nynaeve, I'll say when it comes. There. I don't know who she is. My One of my guesses was Alana because like it kind of looks like a green hue. But then there's another shot later on where it doesn't look like Alana at all. So I don't know. Who do you think the third woman is? And then, okay, we go from uh, the accepted test that then transitions to this shot of Perrin, and then it transitions to this shot of Randy Pants. And mm, so it goes between these and the dialogue over this is separate corners of the world, right? And it, uh, it made me wonder if in the show, they're going to do the thing that they did in the first three books, right? Where they separate everybody and then they bring them together again at the end. Uh, because this book or this season is going to cover books two and three, would they do it twice or would they somehow? Because it look, does look like they're doing both of those storylines, right? Like we've got still the Great Hunt storyline and the Dragon Reborn storyline. So I don't know. Let me know. What do you? Th what are your thoughts on that? Okay. The other thing interesting to note: this uh, this Celine lady, whatever she is wearing, blue, and that blue is like it's a, almost a very specific blue. Like it's the same kind of blue that Moraine wears. So. I don't know. Like, I'm wondering if it's some sort of thing that she's doing intentionally, subconsciously to make Rand trust her. If she thinks Rand trusts Moraine somehow, I, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's to, for the audience to make the audience subconsciously trust her because a large percentage of the audience does trust Moraine. Who knows? I am noticing, though, if you look here closely at her, like the edges of her sleeves and like the edges of whatever fabric this is, there is some fraying going on. So that is giving like a bit more of, you know, she's a bit of a damsel in distress. She doesn't even have good clothes or whatever. She's been lost in this realm for, I don't know. Fraying makes me, making her look a bit more vulnerable. Oh, I just also have to say, I do not enjoy seeing this. Like, if, look at her. She's got her arms snaking around. I, I, she's very snake-like. I, I, stop it. Stop it. Back away. Rand, just back away slowly from the pretty lady she is a pretty lady to be fair but back away back away from the pretty lady and then we've got rand walking through this hallway like it's a very white open hallway it makes me think of kyrian but i'm i'm not sure i'm wondering if i'm thinking of kyrian because i know that this season is going to kyrian like we know that from that thing that uh Rosamund pike did again i think it was new york comic-con she did you know where she interviewed herself in the car or whatever that was she said she was going to kyrian so I know that Kyrian's going to be in this season. I, but this just gives Kyrian and vibes to me. And I also like, look, he's got the blue with the blue coat and the blue shirt underneath. It's, it's a lot of blue going on, which also makes me feel like he's in Moraine's space, which also makes me think Kyrian. OK, look at this shot. You got Moraine on a horse. Somebody's chasing him. But look, look at her back. She appears to have a sword. Which I just, I think that's kind of awesome, right? She never had a sword in season one. What, make, like, what I like about this is it's probably her 
feeling like she can't protect herself anymore. I don't know if Lan is with her or not, but because she doesn't have the power, right? So she's reaching for something else and, and it's a sword. Would she even know how to use it? Maybe she's watched Lan practice. I don't know. But it maybe it's not a sword, but it really, really does look like a sword to me. And this, I just got to... I assumed when I was first watching this that this blue jacket with a, a white crisp blouse underneath was the same as from the first uh, scene. It's not. It's a completely different blue and white blouse. So she is... Uh, she likes clothes. She's got a decent wardrobe. All right, we've got Swan here on the throne, but I don't think she's in Tarvalon because she's wearing that, this headdress that I don't know if you remember, uh, but what was it? The, it was a sneak peek or behind the scenes or something where we saw her get out of a carriage wearing this same outfit, right? So I do think that here she is wherever she was going when she was in that carriage. And again, I'm inclined to think Kyrian just because again, I know that they're going to Kyrian. And uh, in this scene, she is saying to someone in front of her, you can't control him. Later on, we do see her talking to Rand. So I've got a couple of guesses as to what's happening here. Uh, first guess is that she's talking to Moraine about Rand. Rand isn't in the room, so she's telling Moraine that she can't control Rand. But that, mm, I don't know, because that's a weird conversation for her to have while like dressed in all of this and you know, from the throne. Her and Moraine are friends. They are working on this together. That seems like she could just have that conversation in a normal way, not with all of this pomp and circumstance. So the other possibility is that it is part of that same conversation with Rand, right? But instead of talking about Rand, she's talking about maybe Loghain. We see uh, Rand talking to Loghain later on saying, you know, can you teach me how to control it? And Maybe she's saying you can't control, uh, you can't control again, or maybe you can't control Matt, you know, can't control what Matt's going to do because there's some weird stuff with the dagger. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm like at a 60, 40, she's still talking to Rand here, but she's talking about some other dude. Okay. We've got Rand here channeling fire. And one of the frustrations that I was having is a lot of the channeling, especially like any channeling attached to him is happening in the dark. So it's hard to see if there's taint. But I've slowed this down uh, for the replay here, and it does look like I'm seeing taint flow up through these weaves kind of very distinctly, which makes me pretty uh, a bit more confident that in a later scene that I'm going to talk about where the like you can barely like, I'm fairly certain there's no taint in that scene. So I have other thoughts on that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing black weaving up through the fire there. OK, we've got Perrin talking to Hopper. And look, his eyes turn gold. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, but okay, I've already actually said this as a possibility I, somewhere in season one. I can't remember. I have a feeling, this is my guess as to what they're going to do. My guess with the golden eyes anyway, that his eyes aren't going to be gold permanently. I think that could give a bit of an uncanny valley thing, like the same as the whole ageless face thing. Like if they put some sort of effect on all of the Aes Sedai's faces to give them uh, uh, some sort of ageless effect, it would be so distracting whenever they were on screen that you wouldn't be able to pay attention. Now, eyes are, you know, smaller than a face, so it wouldn't be quite as distracting, but it might be distracting, right? But that actually is kind of a help if they use it in the way that I'm kind of, I'm guessing that they're going to do, which is that the golden eyes are going to be a sign. Like when his eyes do this, this is a sign to us, the viewer, that he is in wolf mode. He is communicating with wolves or he's like gone all wolfy in battle. That's what that's going to let us know, right? So the distracting nature of the, the yellow eyes will be a signal to us to interpret what he's doing later on or in that scene in light of his wolfy, wolfy nature, I guess. Which I think that would... Oh, one of the things I know myself, I know a lot of people as well, are very concerned. I, that's the wrong word. Curious, well, also, yeah, concerned how they're going to do wolf communication in the show. I think making the eyes be a sign that wolf communication is happening does half the work for us, right? So they don't have to have a weird voiceover or, oh my God, God forbid, talking, like moving wolf mouths. Ugh, don't do that. Um, but like this would just tell us, okay, everything that you see now, interpret in light of the fact that he is now mind melding with an animal. 
What do you think? All right, we've got Rand choking Moraine, and I have no theories because why? Why are you doing this? Stop doing the kick. Mm, put your hands down. But okay, <laughs> in this particular viewing, when I was taking notes, I noticed, look at his neck. There is blood on his neck right there. You see it? You see it? And that blood, that space, that is pretty much exactly where Moraine held a knife to his throat at the end of episode eight, which made me wonder if this is some sort of dream sequence or something, because like, I don't know, but that, that blood is very, it's very precisely placed. And here we have a collared Egwene. Oh, okay. This storyline, I don't, oh, oh my gosh. All right, my initial thought when I saw this was that this was right after she was captured, but like, look at this dress she's wearing. It's, it's gray. So that made me wonder if, if this is after she's been captured for a while, which then had me quite worried about her because like, look at her face. Like she's got that blood on her side. Her eyes are all bloodshot. Is she being punished this much? Which like, okay, yes, I know. Actually, she kind of is, but oh my God, this is brutal. Hmm. Oh, also, okay, this still could be right after she's captured, right? And they just like forced her to change. I don't know. I just know that this storyline is going to, it's going to be hard. It's going to be so, so hard. Okay, so here we have a repeat of this, this hand motif. In the very first scene, we saw Moraine putting her hand in the water. There's a bloody hand, bloody lady, whatever. And now we've got uh, Nynaeve with her hands covered in blood. And she's looking at it in horror. The first time I saw this, the first thing I thought, of course, is this is taking us back to episode one, where she's tending the wounded and failing to save, I believe, San Bui. And uh, so my thought, I still, still is my thought, is that her testing is going to take her back to winter night. And she's going to sort of relive the trauma of failing to save people. You see her looking at her hand in horror here, right? And, you know, it's a thing that Nynaeve has. It's one of the things that, you know, she could probably use therapy for, where she thinks that when she's failed to do something, like when she's tried her best but failed, she doesn't, she somehow sees that as, as if she has actively done the thing that she tried to stop, if that makes any sense. So like, failing to save that man in the first episode, there is a part of Nynaeve that sees that as the same as if, as if she killed him. Like, it... Uh, there are, I won't go into details because there are, it is spoilers, but there are things that she says in the books at certain points where you can tell she tried her best to do something and she didn't do it. She wasn't able to do it. And she, she somehow sees it as if she did the thing that she tried to stop, if that makes any sense. But okay, so that was my first thought when I saw this here. But look at this, look at what's happening. There's something coming out of her hand. There's like a black dust. And that, that, I think, is what she's looking at in horror, not so much the blood on her hands, although I'm sure that's not making it any easier. So there's something in her hands, and I'm wondering, like, what that could be. Like, they look like ashes, so I'm what like, is it a person's ashes? Did the person dissolve into goo? Is it, is it like what happened in, in Shadar Logoth? Is it like some creature that dissolved into Bashadar grew gut dust, whatever? Or I, I don't know, I, but I think that there's something that like it's obviously gonna be something traumatic, probably a death because Nynaeve hates death and suffering and right. So maybe somebody burns to death. She's got their ashes in their hands. I don't know. It's gross. It's very, very dark and disturbing, but the testing is very, very dark and disturbing. OK, we've got Matt here with the with the dagger. And this is obviously Tarvalon, right? So is this the, the ceremony or whatever, the, the healing that that separates him from the dagger or is he like it because the expression that he's making here looks like he's trying to resist the pull or like resist some sort of temptation so ooh. okay thought that i'm having literally just now uh because i know at new york comic-con there was like a scene with her with leandrin and matt right like i don't think this would have been the scene but maybe leandrin is trying to use the dagger to lure matt to the dark side because you know that's something that the dark side would want so maybe that hmm new theory just now percolating in my brain what do you think okay so there is a lot of debate about who is doing these weaves I, again i was on the dusty wheel a lot of people were debating it seeing the other weaves more clearly was slowing them down and the very clear black going in them i i am more inclined to think that this is a uh, sleen or behind him doing it and like it's not just the the lack of like the lack of obvious taint 
obviously. Whatever. It's not just that that's making me think that. It's also the way the weaves are snaking around him. It very much is giving the impression that they are ensnaring him, which is appropriate. Uh, so yeah, there's also like, there's just a sudden burst to the side of these weaves. So I don't like, what are they doing? Is this like portal stone? What is going on? Like uh, right there, right? You see it burst out. What is that? And then of course we've got, uh, Logan, Logan and, and Rand, and they're both in blue, which is very interesting. Both like very similar outfits. They both have blue jackets with a blue, uh, blue shirt underneath. Of course, Rand's is lighter, which again, makes sense given they're both their, you know, stages and progression into the taint and into madness. Uh, I guess Loghain is eating soup. <laughs> I, I don't know. He he does not look quite as broken here as I remember him from The Great Hunt. However, that sort of head twitch, like Rand here asks him, I want to know how to control it, right? And then, yeah, Loghain gives this little head twitch, which shows some like it gives it it's an inkling of of residual madness so maybe he's he is as broken as i i remember and here what we have what i assume is the sean chan making everyone swear the o's we've got people bowing there's like a dead body at least looks like there um i'm not sure what this is it either tear or falma work in my mind like the the landscape looks like that over here i'm gonna move myself just like watch me Ooh, moving across the screen this looks like a boat, right? Which, again, could be Falma or Tyr. I'm not sure. Um, also, I was looking in this crowd to see if there's anyone that I recognize. And again, I'm just going to shimmy on over here. This is the only person. Not a uh, person. I guess he is a person. Loyal? Is that loyal? Is that like a little blonde afro that I'm seeing right there? It's the only one. Everybody else, I couldn't tell. There's just a lot of white. There's like bodies on the ground. I'm not sure who anybody else is, except obviously in the palanquin. I'm pretty sure that's Soroff. But uh, yeah, what do you think? Okay, so here I was fairly certain that uh, like when I was watching the trailer that the nails were coming out, but I'm just, I'm playing the sound effect. I think it's the sound effect that made me think that because if you watch this, they, they, they're not retracting. They're just on her, so. I don't know how she is not breaking her nails all the time. I love these costumes. They are so cool. I'm assuming this person here is the voice. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Ishii or Balzaman just standing right there. I I really like how, like, she's just working with him. Like, that's something, you know, we, we do know from in that happens in the books. But he's just, like, right there beside her. I I'm very intrigued and curious as to how they're going to work this. It's... Huh. It, it makes perfect sense to me. It honestly makes perfect sense. But I'm also curious to see how it, it, it is tied in narratively that he's just like, here I am. And then, of course, we've got Turok and his gold plated nail protectors, which are, they're just so extra. I love them, but they're really, really extra. And of course, the horn. There it is, the horn of Alir. <laughs> oh, it's like a curly horn curling around something in the middle. I got <laughs> The glimpse is so tantalizing. I really want to see more. I like I pause it. There's nothing to like you could just sort of see the curl. I want to see it. I want to see it. Show it to me, please. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to play, I'm just going to play it with sound, so I'm just pausing it here. I have listened to this particular clip so many times trying to figure out what his accent is. The world will be ours. The whole world will be ours. The whole world will be ours. The whole world will be ours. The whole, the whole world, world will be ours. ours. The, the whole world, world will be ours. ours. I can't tell. Is that an American accent or is it a British accent? I don't know. Obviously, uh, the reason I'm asked saying this is because uh, Robert Jordan said that the Sean Chan in his mind had a Texan accent. I don't know if it like it doesn't sound Texan, but it could be generic American, but it also could be British. I literally can't tell. What do you think? And then we've got the Dabani and they are blowing shit up. Ooh, ooh, I cursed. Whoops. They're blowing stuff up in this jungle setting. We've got that Suldam on the, the left there with like the death mask that I remember from the end of season one. It looks like the skull people behind me. Here, I'll move myself a bit. Hold on. See the skull people there? Yeah, there's like those skull heads. And okay, this setting that we're in, look, and that's, that's sorry. Do you see Elaine there running away? I'm assuming that's Elaine running away, right? there uh but this setting very much reminds me of uh this waygate uh which was i think in either the sneak peek or the behind the scenes from before so 
this setting, this way gate, like they come out of this way gate. This might be the way gate that Leandrin takes them through. Maybe, uh, and then they are here getting captured by these Soldam and Damani. Thoughts? And here we have Egwene protecting Elaine. Like, do you see Elaine running behind her there? That's Elaine. She's going, and Egwene is exploding. You see, she is channeling. She is not moving her hands at all. Just look at that. Look at that look of determination on her face. She's just like, <laughs> except she's not doing this with her hands. <laughs> she's the main thing. Look at her. Look at her. No, like, that's just fire just coming out of her with colors and weaves and ah, it's so good. And it's followed by another naive explosion. This is obviously during her testing, right? Like this, that's the two rivers. That's obviously the two rivers there. She is screaming in terror. And uh, can you see her? I'll move myself again. Watch. Woo, there I go. At the beginning, those are Trollocs. Those are Trollocs on the edge of her explosion. So this is another reason why I think her testing is going to take her back to winter night, which makes perfect sense. Why is Leandrin here at this smelting pot? What is she doing? Okay, one theory that I heard someone suggest was that she is tossing her ring in there as she goes like full dark, like she's going Sith, right? So she's just throwing away her ring. That's just not a very smart thing to do, right? Like the ring is very, very useful. There's no reason to do that. I mean, people do stupid things. Definitely in these books, people do stupid things, but I don't know. What do you think? What do you think she's doing there? Oh, uh, I had a thought, actually. She could be grieving dead Aes Sedai, right? I, that was in my notes. That was not a thought I had just now. It's just I just caught it in my notes. She sincerely was angry and upset and grieving Karene. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure she wasn't faking that. So this could be her sincerely grieving the dead Aes Sedai. I don't know. What do you think? This shot with Perrin and this little girl, it it terrifies me because all of the possibilities that I can think of, they just they, they make me think I'm going to be broken by this scene. Right. Uh, possibility one. It's a child of his from the Flickerverse, you know, a child that he can't have because his wife was accidentally killed <laughs> uh, or uh, or it's one of his siblings, which either one of these things could break me. And I mean, OK, to be fair. It could actually be that, like, Perrin and this child are not even connected at all. Trailers lie to us all the time. That is a known thing. But they actually, like, the lighting, the, the, the landscape, I'm pretty sure they're connected. It's the happiness on her face, the happiness on his face. Happy Perrin. Like, when have we seen Happy Perrin? Like, episode one was when we saw Happy Perrin. <laughs> so, beginning only of episode one, like... Uh, this this terrifies me. This whole this is probably one of the more terrifying scenes from the trailer, to be honest. Speaking of having his ladies to smooch, 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 smooch. Okay, so I noted in my initial reaction that Swan is missing some arm tattoos. She's also wearing blue. So I'm pretty sure this is a flashback, right? And it's I I think uh, I had some people suggest that maybe it's a flashback to right out before or or after. Uh, they got, you know, Guitar's uh, prophecy. I don't think so. It, it's possible, like, they could change timelines, but the fact that they're both in blue means that they're both eyes to die. They're not novices or even accepted at this point. So I don't think that that could be the timing. I think they have to be uh, eyes to die. So it's, I think it's just a flashback to some time during the past 20 years. I want to see it, though. It's obviously Tarvalon. Like, look at that architecture. Obviously Tarvalon. Give it to me, please. And then here we have Egwene and Nynaeve hugging. Egwene is very clearly in her novice white. She's got an apron, so she's doing chores. Nynaeve does not look like she's in white. So she, I don't think she's in her accepted dress at this point. So is this like before she goes to her testing? I, I'm not sure. I, at the timing, I'm curious about. I could be wrong. It could be the lighting. There's a scene later on where I'm fairly certain that Elaine is in white, but the lighting makes her... her shirt not look quite as white as this so maybe i'm wrong but it looks to me like this is just nine's regular clothes so what's going on and then here we have nine going into her testing in the shift this is the shot where i was like this late that that lady does not look like alana to me so i don't know who this lady is uh this looks amazing look you could see like the sidar going up the sides of the arches here i love it oh this is gonna be a brutal scene to watch and this is the scene I was talking about. So we've got Elaine or Egwene talking to Elaine. I'm pretty sure that Elaine here is wearing her novice whites, but they kind of look like the same color as what 
Nynaeve was wearing earlier. So maybe it was the lighting. I'm not sure. But okay, watching this uh, kept making me wonder because in the books, of course, uh, Elaine has met Rand, right? She's already become kind of obsessed with the weird kid that fell into her garden. So her going with Nynaeve and Egwene, like it, it's it's an impulsive thing to do, but it, Elaine is nothing if not impulsive, right? Her and her brother both. But uh, here she has not met Rand. So why is she going to join them? Is she just going to tag along for, for funsies? I mean, that is kind of a lame, to be honest. So maybe. This looks like the four gate, largely because we got a lot of wood here, which makes me think it could catch fire. <laughs> Anytime I think of Kyrian and the four gate, I think it explodes, it catches fire. But also, like, even the, um, the, the silhouette of the city behind there, or city, I don't know, kind of looks four gatey to me. And this, this very much looks like Moraine. So Moraine is storming out. Maybe she's storming out of the room after Rand chokes her. <laughs> or I don't know. I, I This looks like the room that we see Rand in in some of the scenes and some of the shots. So that's what I'm thinking is going on here. Something happened. She's storming out into the foregate in Kyrian or outside of Kyrian. OK, so this scene, Moraine is saying you have no conception of the power they wield. And again, lots of debate about who she's talking about here. My initial uh, assumption was that it's the Sean Chan. You know, she's lashing out. Uh, you don't understand channeling land. You're just a whatever because you don't understand. You're a man. You can't understand. You don't understand. They're channeling with the. They're fighting with the power. You don't understand what power they're using. I I don't know. Like obviously some people. I have had people say, but of course he does. He he's a warder. I the reason I like to me it's her lashing out. Like you can't possibly understand blah 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 because she's angry and bitter, uh, because of what's been done to her. Right. Um, I don't know though because there's also the fact uh, that. In this scene, like her hair is incredibly disheveled. The the lighting, it again makes me think it's happening right after episode eight, which she doesn't know about the Shan Shan at that point. So she can't possibly be talking about them. Could she be talking about the Forsaken? She doesn't know that the Forsaken are out yet. She thinks that she just, you know, encountered and fought the Dark One or something. So I, I don't know. I don't this. You could be disheveled at many times. So she doesn't have to be exactly in that instant right there. Right. And she could be talking about the Forsaken, but again, she says no conception of the power they wield. She is talking plural. Does she know multiple Forsaken are free? Or is she talking about something else? What do you think? What do you think she's talking about? Also, I'm, I'm actually really, really excited for this particular storyline. Like the her and Lan dynamic at this point, like Lan is saying, you can't do this by yourself. She's probably trying to isolate herself at this point. She feels vulnerable but also responsible for him because she can't protect him anymore so she like up until this point i feel like she's probably thought they've had a very equal partnership she can use the power he's big strong sorty man and now he's still big strong sorty man and she's got nothing at least in her mind right so this dynamic between the two of them i'm really excited this is a new thing and i'm really looking forward to seeing how it's explored oh, look, look, look that's abby that's abby <laughs> putting on her shoe but she's about to kick some ass yeah. I cannot wait to see this. Okay. All right. I can't be the first person to think this. I, I'm sure I've heard other people say this. I don't know, but I'm going to say it anyway. Watch, like seeing her here with Perrin behind her made me wonder if she is going to be the Aiel in the cage, right? That could happen. Could be interesting. I know some, a lot of Stonewolf uh, shippers will be quite upset about that, but it is an interesting possibility. It also, okay, the stone wolf shipping, you know, because Gaul and, and Perrin made me realize her and Perrin are going to be together in scenes. There are going to be people who ship Avienda with Perrin, which is a ship I, I, I have never even, I've never even considered that possibility. And my, like, that occurred to me watching this. And my brain just kind of blew up in that moment. Like, what? And look, she's fighting white cloaks! Yeah. So, okay, if she's the Aiel in the cage, would the white cloaks have put, put her in the cage? Which, I mean, I can actually see that. I can see the white cloaks just have deciding that all Aiel are dark friends, and that would make sense. And then that would put them in Falma, or I guess, I mean, if they've moved the Falma battle to Tyr, I don't know. But it would put them in that whatever location they are for the final battle, right? At the end of... Well, I don't know what bat what order they're gonna. I don't know if they're gonna do Falma and Tear at the same time, like the, you know, condense those into one or separately, like one half season, one half season. I don't know. But anyway, this is cool. This is cool. I'm I'm here for this. 
Speaking of things I'm here for, my name for the sword. I love it. I love it. And this to me actually makes perfect sense character wise, not just because, you know, Nynaeve likes hitty things and Africa face punch and all that. But if they go the route of the books, which I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't. She's blocked, right? She is in the White Tower to study channeling and she can't channel. And Nynaeve would get incredibly frustrated with not being able to do the thing. So she would need a thing to do. And she became really good friends with the warders on their travels to Tarvalon. So it makes perfect sense to me that, that they would be like, here, let's teach you how to hit stuff with sticks properly, not just bonking. You know, I, I love it. I also love that we transition right from Nynaeve to Lan. Look at that. <laughs> perfect. And of course, we have Lan kicking. Is that a Murdral? Is Lan kicking a Murdral in the face? Is that what's happening there? Is Lan kicking a Murdral in the face? And then we've got Leandrin here walking through the streets of Tarblon. I'm pretty set on my thoughts that this is her leading the girls to what I'm presuming is the way gate to take them to where they're going to get captured by the Shan Chan. Partially, like, she's got a basket with her, right? Which makes sense if she's going on a trip, which they were at that point. But it's also, like, if you catch, I'm going to wait until she looks back. There's an expression she gives here, which just, it looks like exasperated, right? I can imagine the three girls, especially, you know, Elaine's with them. They're back there, like, all excited. They're going on an adventure, and Elaine's being kind of weird and giggly, and she's just like, what the fuck? We're just, oh, I cursed again. Sorry. But she gets really, really exasperated. Like, we just got to go. We got to go. What are you doing? This is a secret mission. You're not supposed to be drawing attention to yourself. That's what this looks like to me. Uh, the other theories I've heard other people say is that she's headed to North Harbor to meet the man that uh, Moraine uh, threatened her with. Um, and I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, I don't I don't know if there's any others. I mean, she could be doing any number of things, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm right on this one. OK, now we have Nynaeve coming out of her testing and like, oh, OK, she's got side wounds, I guess, or at least there's blood on the side. And the blood is just it's so specific I, I brought up, I think, in my reaction video that Nynaeve gets, uh, she gets stigmata in her hands, right? She gets these scars in the palms of her hands that don't heal uh, in the books. I don't think that will happen in the show just because it doesn't really ever come up again in the books. It's not really that big a deal. It's just interesting to me that that happens. But this could be her having like had blood on her hands and wiped it off on her, her dress in some sort of allusion to, to that stigmata. But also the blood is dripping. Right. And it, I don't know that there would be enough blood on your hands for you to put it on your your shift and then have it start to drip. So it does seem like it's it's seeping from wounds in her. I don't know even what you like. It's not her side. It's like the in the either side of her abdomen there. I oh, this testing. I I really would love to be an eye. I I don't want to do this. Perrin. Slicing white cloak. This is uh, it's more Egwene to break my soul. This is nothing new, but I just, you know, I know you all want to see this. Here you go. Here's the shot that, like, broke the Wheel of Time fandom for, like, a while. Enjoy. Okay, so we've got Leandrin here talking to, I'm guessing this is Egwene that she's talking to. The other guess I had was that it was possibly Moraine, which was interesting because where? Like... Moraine can't go to Tarvalon, right? So are they meeting somewhere else? That would be interesting. But the more I look at it, I'm pretty sure that she's talking to Egwene. And I mean, her and Egwene do travel together. And look, she's wearing white. That's not Moraine. That's that's an novice. That's Egwene. I don't know if this is what is intended by this, but this is my headcanon because it, it amuses me so much. Like Rand's got that super fancy coat on. He's trying to hide his fancy coat. But it's not working, Rand. Everybody can see you're fancy. All right. Here we've got Turok. I don't know how he does his sword fighting with those nails. He he's, he's even has the like the gold nail guards on. I, that's fighting with those nail guards and the, the long nails. That's a skill in and of itself. It's impressive. But did you catch this? I've slowed this down, but I'll pause it so you can see. That's a heron. That's a heron on his blade. What? Pretty sure I said this in my reaction, but this has to be a dream sequence, right? Like, who? is fighting with this fire sword because look at this that's not rand that's not rand who has this fire sword well, I, 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 I keep watching this i do not know that is a fire sword it looks like a fire wrought or fire power wrought sword the person they have a lot of hair it's white 
it makes me wonder if it is this person. I don't know if you remember this was I, I think this was from the behind the scenes. I don't know. It's the only possibility I can think of. But who is this and why do they have a power rod sword? I don't I, or is it a power? Rod? What else could it be? It has to be a power rod sword, right? Who is poking the murder with the fire sword? Then we have Matt with a quarter staff. Is this the scene? Is this the scene that the fandom loves? I, I like this scene too, not as much as most of the fandom, but I really do like this scene. Is this him about to like deliver a killing blow and then like being like, wait, no, my father told me don't do that. That's a killing blow. Is that what this is? Or like there are two uh, trocans on the ground here underneath him. And then, and then, okay, we've got explosions at a fort right after that Matt scene. So mm, you think of what I'm thinking. Is this Matt? Did you do this? Did you do this? And look, we've got people flying away from the explosions. And okay, it's just me. I don't know. But like, look at this person. That person is giving to me a, a little bit of Aiel vibes, which makes sense because the Aiel were there when the explosions that I think this is. They were there when that happened. It's kind of sad to think that these those people do not look like they will have survived this. But, you know, it is a battle. Uh, so, but anyway... Is this what I think it is? I think it's what I think it is. And then we've got Swan talking here with Rand. This is this is definitely not the Hall of the Tower. This doesn't look anything like that, although she is on the Omerlin seat. But I think this is in Kyrian. We've got Rand in his Kyrian jacket. And if you look there above the seat, there is a Kyrian in uh, sun. So I'm pretty sure this, again, is in Kyrian. There's a couple of other places, like right there, that you can see the, the Kyrian and rising sun motif there. So I do think that's where that is. I don't know why the Omerlin seat is there. like not Swan, but the actual seat. I don't know why it's there. Does does she travel with the Omerlin seat? Does it does the Omerlin seat like fold up into the carriage? I don't, I don't know. That very much looks like the Omerlin seat, like the same it has the same load of sort of lattice work there in the in the stone. So I don't know. But OK, so she's talking with Rand here. And I'm pretty sure this is like a a replacement for that scene in The Great Hunt where she meets up with him and she's like, hey, you're you're the dragon reborn. And he's like, no. And she's like, yep. And whatever. And like it's Varen and uh, Swan and, and Moraine all basically trying to explain to him who he is and whatever. But there's a difference in the show, right? Because in the show, he's already accepted that he's the dragon reborn. He said it to Moraine. He's literally had some memories of Luz Theron. Balsamon has said it to him. He's already accepted it. So I'm curious as to what she could be saying to him here. What is she communicating? Like, maybe she's trying to give him some instructions or tell him what he has to do next. I don't know. He's not happy about it. Like, if you look at his face, he does not look happy here. This, But I don't think this can be him being like, no, I'm not the dragon, because he's already accepted it. Like, at least in the show canon. People, characters backslide, so I suppose that's possible, but... That doesn't seem possible, like, or it doesn't seem likely to me, given the stuff that he went through in season one. So I very much am curious to know what she's communicating to him here and what's making him that angry. Anyway, let me know. What are your thoughts on this? Anyway, okay. I don't know how long this video has been going to be. I've been recording for over an hour, so we'll see how long it is after I edit it. But these are all the things that I missed or that jumped out at me as I was watching the trailer for the umpteenth time. What are your thoughts? How, what, what things have you noticed? What do you think of my, my theories that I've developed or whatever? Some of them kind of crazy. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments below. And I'm sure I will have even more thoughts as the days go on. Um, again, I am going to just encourage you again to support the uh, Entertainment Community Fund. We really want uh, the WGA and SAG-AFTRA to win. They are doing this for us, right? They, they make these things for us to watch and enjoy. So the least we can do is support them in this. And uh, yeah, um, if you like my content and you want to support me, I do have a Patreon that is also linked in the description below uh, to my patrons. Again, I am so grateful for you. Thank you so, so much for your support. It means the world to me. And uh, yeah, with that, I am going to end this here. So please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>